Um, I'm going to bring up Rom Besnet. Uh, Rom is with the SBA, and he's got this awesome presentation. He reached out to me uh, a couple months ago, and, and he's been hitting other um, commun communities within the Kansas City region regarding this, regarding their programs. And I thought it would be great to have him come and talk to to startups and entrepreneurs like yourself. So, without further ado, Rom, if you want to come up. Can you hear me okay? Good. Uh, thanks, Matt, uh, for arranging this. It's, a, it's one of the best events I have ever been, actually, for a small business training event. And I uh, appreciate, appreciate all of you being here today. Uh, my name is Ram Busnet. I'm with the US Small Business Administration. We cover 28 counties in eastern Kansas and uh, 61 in western Missouri. So my primary role is to reach out to communities like yourself and uh, educate folks on uh, the taxpayer-funded programs and services. So the mission of our agency is to help small businesses and entrepreneurs start, grow, expand, and recover. And I have a, a presentation slides for you guys today. And then also I'll be taking questions towards the end of my presentation. Uh, let's start with a small video. An idea, a concept, a plan, a dream. That's how businesses start. With the help of the U.S. Small Business Administration, businesses transform from a home office to a global operation, a double oven setup to a six-person bakery, concept to manufacturing, and from contemplating closure to not just surviving, but thriving. That's the power of the SBA. We make small business our business by being an ally, an advocate, a mentor, a coach, an educator, a friend to ambitious and passionate entrepreneurs. And we're igniting change, sparking action, so businesses across the nation can confidently start, grow, expand, and recover. SBA, empowering small businesses, empowering the American dream. For us, a business is considered small. If it is a manufacturing company, it has less than 500 employees. And if it is any other companies, it has less than 15 million in net assets and less than 5 million in net income for each of the last two years. And I can uh, provide a copy of this presentation via uh, Matt, if you'd like to have a copy of this, okay? So, so we are located in downtown Kansas City, Commerce Bank building, fifth floor. And we have a plethora of good information regarding small businesses on our website as well. And then uh, I normally post upcoming training events on our Twitter account. If you follow that, uh, you'll be kept abreast. Okay, so uh, downtown Kansas City, uh, a lot of inf good information regarding small businesses on our website. And then I uh, update our Twitter account regularly so that um, if you follow it, you'll, you'll be kept abreast of uh, what is happening around in these 89 counties. So we were established in 1953 with the United States uh, Small Business Act. Uh, we are an independent federal agency of the U.S. government. We often get uh, confused with some kind of small business association or something like that. But uh, unfortunately, that, that should not have happened. We, we are an independent federal agency, and our job is to promote small businesses. So the mission, like I said before, is to help small businesses and entrepreneurs start, grow, expand, and recover. Uh, we have several pillars that we work through, and I'll explain in detail in uh, subsequent slides. So why should you work with us? So essentially, many of our programs and services that we have, uh, these are all free, uh, no additional cost. Uh, there might be a minimum charge through our resource partners for some specialized events, but uh, most of them are free. And when, I, when we think about a small business uh, uh, programs and services, I would like to think SBA as a mothership in the sense that uh, we have so many various programs. Uh, we fund many small organizations and also large national organizations to promote small businesses. So we are uh, in all over the United States, including the U.S. territories like the uh, Virgin Islands and also Puerto Rico. So if you can see here, uh, the Kansas, Missouri, Iowa, and Nebraska, uh, we are region seven. 
and we have a branch office in Springfield, Missouri, and also another uh, district office in St. Louis. So we have divided uh, the counties based on where we are located. So we serve 28 in eastern Kansas and uh, 61 in western Missouri. So there are some facts about uh, small businesses. Uh, when you hear the jobs report every month, many of them are uh, created by small businesses, and a small business is very important to us. Uh, there are about 30 million small businesses in the, uh, in the US, and given that we are a capitalist economy, we consider small businesses to be the heartbeat of the US economy. And what we also uh, found that a community that has a vibrant small business community, uh, the, the the tax base is stronger, uh, good public services like uh, education and also transportation and so forth, and then less crime rates. So it has uh, those components to it as well. So how we do it, right? So there are basically four pillars. The first one is the entrepreneurial development. This is the training, uh, training and counseling and anything from how to write a business plan to how to access capital and so forth. Uh, we put a lot of resources on the back end because what we have found is when people are well educated and informed of what is out there, they make better business decisions and uh, they, they tend to be more successful as opposed to jumping into starting a business uh, prematurely. Uh, the second is the access to capital. Uh, I'll talk in detail about this. The third one is the government contracting and small business certifications. The last is the disaster recovery. So uh, going deep into the entrepreneurial development, so this is the phase where you know, starting a business is a one-man task uh, normally, and uh, there are so many things to do, and uh, it can be uh, you know, frustrating at times. So what we are trying to do is we have a checklist of things a small business owners should do to start a business, and we have uh, sections like planning phase, uh, starting phase, growing phase, and so forth. So on planning your business phase, uh, we help uh, small business owners and entrepreneurs with uh, writing a business plan or calculating the startup cost, uh, funding your business, and so forth. Uh, these are some examples. The list is not exhaustive, but we also help with market research and competitive analysis. For instance, if someone wants to open a, a beauty, uh, beauty brand, for, for instance, and their target customer is like a 55-year-old white female making $100,000 a year, uh, we can do research to find zip codes that house that population. So when this individual opens a small business in that location, the likelihood of them becoming successful is much higher, or they can target marketing, uh, even uh, flyers and so forth, to those uh, territories. So once uh, the planning your business phase is complete, once you're comfortable with this, this task, then we help you move into the uh, launch your business. So on this phase, uh, we help you with uh, picking a business location uh, based, off of that, based off of that analysis of market research and so forth. And then we also help you as simple as registering your business. And again, we will not write a business plan for you, but we'll be there for you to help throughout that process. And then we also help with um, license and permits and as simple as opening a small business account. Okay, so we, we plan the, uh, your business, launch your business, and now we help you with managing your business as well. So managing your finances, cash flow statements, uh, income statements and so forth. Uh, and also hiring and managing right employees, staying legally compliant. Uh, marketing and sales, uh, through our resource partners, we do a lot of trainings on social media, uh, uh, marketing, and so forth. Uh, and then we also incorporate this uh, planning for emergencies into our um, writing a business plan phase. What we have found is normally a small business is a one-man show, and when something happens to that individual, uh, there is no uh, alternative plan. And when we plan ahead of time, uh, we, we, we ensure that the small businesses don't suffer as much when something bad happens to that founder. So we incorporate the preparing for emergencies and also the exit uh, strategy on, uh, on the planning phase. So we, we help plan, launch, manage. The next is to grow your business. So we help you with uh, getting uh, guarantee loans to expand to new locations. Uh, and also, uh, we can help you with merging with other small businesses or acquiring uh, your competitors and so forth. We help small businesses get into federal contracting space and also exporting to foreign countries. 
uh, there are some uh, certain privileges of being um, a women-owned small business or a veteran-owned small business or a minority-owned small business when it comes to uh, getting into federal contracts. So we help you get certified for uh, 8A minority-owned small business and also uh, hub zone historically underutilized business zone certified small businesses. Uh, I have another slide uh, which talks a little more detail about federal contracting. So these are some uh, local resources that we fund uh, nationally and also locally, uh, partially fund these organizations to promote small businesses. The first one is the Small Business Development Center. We have many of these centers on uh, both sides of the state, Kansas and Missouri. For the, ja the Jackson County, Missouri is served by the uh, University of uh, Missouri, uh, Kansas City, uh, SPDC at um, 4747 Trust. And then we have, uh, for the Kansas side, for this area, we have uh, Johnson County Community College. They have a small business development center network there. And uh, we have SCORE mentors. Uh, these are uh, organization. Uh, we have a chapter here in Kansas City. So ideally, this is a volunteer-based organization. We fund the operation side of it nationally. The way it works is uh, these are individuals who have been in business. Uh, for a long time, and it is their way to give back to the community. So if, if someone wants to start an IT business, the SCORE mentors help that individual connect with someone from the industry who, who have hands-on knowledge uh, of that industry and so forth. And then we also have the Women's Business Center in Fairway, Kansas. Uh, the, the goal of uh, the Women's Business Center is to promote women-owned businesses. And what we have found is a majority of uh, small businesses are owned by male, and we are trying to level the playing field between male and female-owned businesses. And uh, they, they help everyone, but their primary focus is on women-owned small businesses. And uh, they not only provide training and counseling uh, and helping every aspect of a small business, they also provide some funding now uh, via grant, uh, grant money that they receive. And we also have a, a Veteran Business Resource Center office uh, in our uh, downtown location. Uh, primarily just like the Women's Business Center, these are individuals that uh, promote veteran-owned small businesses. Many times these counselors are veterans themselves, so uh, what we have found is veterans um, are very comfortable working with them. Okay, okay so uh, one more thing. So I also happen to be the project officer for the Missouri Small Business Development Center network. There are 13, including the lead center here uh, in the state of Missouri. And to put things in perspective, uh, SPA funded uh, the Small Business uh, Development Center network uh, in Missouri $2.3 million last year to promote small businesses. So it's a big deal for us. So here are some of the examples of trainings that uh, we provide to communities like yourself. Uh, when we uh, visit your communities and when we understand the needs of that community uh, among uh, us and our various resource partners, we can come back to your communities to do trainings like this. Recently, we had an international trade info session uh, in, at Majuma Credit Union in Overland Park, Kansas. So we had brought a wealth of resources that promote international trade in one location so that uh, individuals got an opportunity to ask uh, what resources are available there. Okay. So the uh, next uh, pillar that we have is access to capital, right? <clears throat> so the, the, the myth is that uh, we do not make uh, direct loans. So we make guarantee loans. I'll give you an example, uh, which we should clarify what a guarantee loan looks like. And then uh, we never compete with banks. So we are an alternate source of uh, funding. So the way it works is so if we look at a continuum of good loans, right? Very good loans, very bad loans. The good loans would be good collateral, good credit score, uh, you know, a, a small business that is actually making money and so forth. So maybe up to half of that, the lending institutions make those loans themselves. And if someone is qualified uh, to get a loan from a traditional method, we do not come in. They can still get training and counseling and other help, but uh, we, we do not come in in terms of helping funding. So the second quarter, of the, in, in that continuum, the, the first quarter of the second half, I would say, these are loans, uh, they have great packages, but are missing some things, like maybe collateral is not good enough, or credit score is not that great. That's when we come in and we vouch on behalf of the small business owners, so that it is still the lending institutions that make the loans, but if the business goes default, then we provide uh, uh, guarantees up to 85%, meaning if I'm getting a $100,000 loan, and if I go, my business goes belly up, the lending institution gets up to $85,000 uh, from the government. So 
So there is a, uh, there is a very high demand for these kind of loans. Um, among these 89 counties that we serve, last year we did $363 million worth of guarantee loans supporting more than 350 small businesses in, in Kansas and Missouri. Uh, during the same time, so I have uh, some numbers for Jackson County, Missouri, and if you guys would like to get a, a copy of these loan volumes based off uh, counties and each side of the state, uh, please get in touch with me and I'll, I'll forward that to you. So this is not fiscal year, this is calendar year. So from January 1st until December 31st of uh, calendar year 2018, ja uh, Jackson County, Missouri did $61.9 million worth of uh, guarantee loans, SBA guaranteed loans, uh, and helping 104 small businesses. Okay, so it's, it's a big deal. Uh, and then Jackson County seems to be doing very well. The, another competitor would be uh, Johnson County, uh, Kansas side. And then there are some reasons why uh, lending institutions want to work with SBA. Uh, there are various reasons, but some of them that I would like to highlight is uh, the many of our uh, loan programs are guaranteed by the SBA, so uh, we absorb some of that risk. It's a very different loan program you can add to your portfolio, and many times you can sell that loan portfolio in the secondary market for premium. And then uh, you'll also get credit for the CRA, uh, Community Reinvestment Act, uh, helping small businesses. And also many times uh, small business owners bring their checking and saving, uh, savings account with you, and uh, you, you can have a long-term client as well. And many times small, if small businesses do succeed, you have a very good uh, uh, clientele. So what can you get an SBA loan for? So you can get an SBA loan to uh, buy an existing business. And again, this is not an exhaustive list. Uh, you can fund for a startup. Uh, many times, banking institutions are reluctant to give money to startups because they are inherently very risky. Uh, so they can, uh, small business owners can get the SBA-backed uh, loans uh, to start a business. Uh, construction, working capital, uh, purchase of machinery, equipment, and also the refinance of business debt. So the interest rates are capped at certain levels, so small business owners um, know what they're getting into when they get an SBA loan. The banking institution, based on that client profile, determines what amount they want to charge, but there is still a ceiling on how much they can charge. Okay, so uh, the requirement is uh, a small business have to be organized for profit, located in the U.S., uh, be small based on size requirements, that's the uh, less than 500 employees for manufacturing and the 15 million in net assets deal that I explained at the very beginning. Uh, demonstrate a need for the desired credit elsewhere. Uh, basically, these individual small businesses would not get any loan without the help of SBA. And then uh, a good character like credit score or you have to vouch personally against that loan. And then uh, cash flow statements if you are an existing business. And then uh, if you have 25% uh, equity in your house, we take that as a collateral as well. And then many times uh, we want the skin in the game kind of deal, so we want you to put at least 10% down. Ideally, we would prefer 20% for startups. So uh, I would like to get into a little more detail on the loan programs that we have. The first one is the Guarantee Loan Program, uh, or 7A is the name of the loan program. There are so many different varieties of loans under this umbrella. This is an umbrella program, and the banking institution determines what uh, program or what kind of loan is uh, best for that small business uh, clientele. So under this umbrella there are various programs. Uh, I just want to kind of touch base on uh, what, what this program does, right? So basically guarantee loans up to five million dollars, guarantee runs up to 85 percent, and the term of the loan is 25 years. So many times lending institutions do not make loan uh, that far out because the longer the term of the loan, the more risky it is. So with the help of SBA, what, what we're trying to do is, if the term of that loan is longer, the small business owners do not have to uh, worry about paying, making substantial monthly payments. They can make that uh, a small monthly payment and focus more on their, uh, on their business. That way, if they are successful, they can always pay these loans upfront without any penalty. And, uh, that, and many times, like, equipments and so forth, I think lending institutions, they have, a, depending upon internal policies, they have like five years or seven years or so forth. But with the SBA loans, you can go as far as 10, 10 years, 15 years, depending upon individual circumstances. So uh, within that uh, 7A loan program, we have like express loans where the guarantee runs up to 50%, uh, 
and the loan uh, is 350,000. As with many government programs, uh, many times the paperwork burden is substantial in many of these programs. We're trying to work on that, automate some of it, but then the express loans uh, can be in the hands of the small business owners in as, as less as uh, two, three weeks. And again, the guarantee runs up to 50%, as opposed to 85%. And then uh, we have another loan uh, program called the Long-Term uh, Fixed Asset Loan Program. So these are for um, bu to buy or to build owner-occupied commercial real estate and also to purchase a fixed uh, capital assets. So um, if someone wants to open an outlet mall-like structure or um, motel, buy a motel or a hotel or something along those lines. Uh, this, this loan is designed uh, for those kind of uh, business opportunities. The way it works is you put 10% down, a lending institution puts 50%, and a certified development company that has an existing relationship with SBA puts 40% down. And one good thing about the long-term fixed asset program is whatever you are buying will be the collateral itself. Like if you are buying a building, uh, or a property or an, uh, a large manufacturing equipment, uh, we can take that as a collateral itself. Okay? And then we have some other loan programs called microloans. So microloans, uh, these are through our nonprofit microlenders. We have Altcap and Justin Peterson here in, in the Kansas, Missouri market. The way it works is these institutions get low interest loan from SBA, and then, and then they turn around and lend this money out to their communities at their own risk and invest in, that, uh, in their communities. So uh, $50,000 is the max. You cannot buy a real estate with, this, with the microloan. And uh, when nonprofit microlenders give you a microloan, they not only give you just the loan, they also provide technical assistance, meaning they help you with writing a business plan. This is because annually we fund these organizations since they are nonprofit organizations and also lenders. We fund them with grant money to provide technical assistance. So last year, Justin Peterson received $150,000 worth of grants from SBA to provide technical assistance to their communities. Okay? And then uh, we also have a loan program called uh, Community Advantage that goes up to $250,000. It is, again, given by nonprofit microlenders. And uh, the, the loan is 250 guarantee loan, up to 85%. So the, the way we have designed these loan programs is many small businesses have their own kind of needs, right? Some of them might be uh, a, a bakery shop that just needs to buy another oven for $10,000. And others might be a small business that wants to export to foreign country and needs a substantial uh, infusion of capital. So, so we have uh, varieties of program that covers all kinds of businesses. And ideally, uh, we would start small with a microloan that has less, uh, less rest restrictions on credit requirements. And then if they are successful, we would introduce a community advantage loan up to 250, and then the 7 loan up to 5 million. And uh, by that time, our, our hope is that, that the small business does not need uh, any more capital help from the government. Are there age or education requirements on the microloans? Uh, that will be a benefit for you when you uh, submit that loan package, but I, I do not believe there, there is any requirement of age or education. Yeah. Oh, age is 18. Oh, yeah, sorry. That you have to have a co-signer you if you're under 18 years old. Yeah, of course, so yeah. thanks for correcting me on that. Yes, 18. And then we also have the international trade loan. These are for small businesses that want to export to foreign countries. Uh, we provide uh, trade loans up to $5 million. Uh, as you can see, the guarantees run up to 90%, and the maturity is uh, 25 years. So what we have found is uh, small businesses that export to foreign countries, they, play, they pay their employees well. And then since their risk is diversified, uh, they, they uh, invest quite a bit in their local economy as well. And then we have the export working capital loan. This is uh, for a small business that received a substantial purchase order from a foreign country. As long as you, uh, you provide the, the proof of that purchase order, uh, we can provide you working capital loan up to $5 million. Uh, the idea is that you have to pay that back within a year. Uh, and we also do our due diligence to, through our uh, sister agencies to ensure that whoever is requesting uh, that uh, product or service is actually a, a legitimate business. So we have resources in place to go check uh, sites of these locations and so forth. And then uh, the another program is the authority bond programs. So many times when a small business uh, bid for federal or local contracts, they need to put aside some money. Uh, like an escrow account, which is a bond. 
Uh, and many times small businesses do not have that capacity. So we support uh, small businesses if uh, they are looking into uh, public or private prime contracts. Uh, for the cost of contract up to $6.5 million, we provide uh, support with uh, sorority bonds. And then the same thing for federal contracts up to uh, $10 million. Okay. So other programs that we have uh, is uh, the small business investment companies. This is like a shark tank deal. Uh, there are investment companies that have existing relationship with SBA. They have to be governed by certain rules and regulations. And if a small business wants to uh, get an equity or uh, debt, then they pitch in front of these uh, small business investment companies and then um, they can get uh, debt or equity. And many times uh, when these people uh, get into small businesses, uh, it is more than just the equity. The relationship uh, does matter. And, and I'm sure uh, many people would like to ha uh, have a business uh, relationship with Mark Cuban, for example, from Shark Tank. Because of that relationship, um, the likelihood of that small business becoming successful just goes uh, very high up. And then uh, 13, 13 federal agencies are in the uh, Small Business Innovation Research and Small Business Technology Transfer Program. Uh, small Business Administration has the oversight of it. The way this program works is um, many federal agencies provide grant money to commercialize uh, critical research and also critical technologies. And many times um, these grant monies are awarded to uh, education institutions and uh, small business owners work, work through those institutions and if there is a viable product, the federal agency does help to commercialize that. So five Cs, uh, we put this slide here because what we have found is many times small businesses go to uh, lending institutions prematurely asking for a loan and if they are not prepared, uh, the banking institution might not have the capacity to educate them on uh, various uh, components of financing. So our goal is to educate them before they go to the banking institution. And the last thing that we want to happen is someone goes to a banking institution asking for a loan prematurely. The bank cannot make that loan. And then they come back and go about doing their uh, regular job. And that idea could be another Cerner or something along those lines. So we educate communities on how to build your credit through our uh, other sister agencies like FDIC and also through our nonprofit micro lenders. And the capacity, uh, many of these are uh, pretty self-explanatory, and I think uh, most of the crowd here is uh, with the lending institution itself. So I, I, I don't feel a need to kind of expand on these. And again, you'll have a copy of these slides as well. So if you want to get a, an SBA loan, uh, you can go to sba.gov slash lender match, and you provide the information, normally your name, uh, what kind of business you are trying to get into, how much loan you need, and based off of that zip code, the lending institutions that are SBA lenders will reach out to you within 48 hours. Uh, the way we have set up this platform is if lenders do not reach out to these uh, uh, small business owners within 48 hours, the contact information will uh, disappear from their platform. And, and there is some sense of um, competition, uh, so small business owners normally get a call from at least someone. And many times we advise small business owners to uh, go to their existing uh, lending institution if they have the checkings or savings account and work with them or ask them if they do an SBA loan. Uh, that probably is, uh, is the easiest route to go about it. So these are some national uh, companies that started sp small with the help of SBA. I cannot use their uh, logos because of uh, copyright issues, but you can see uh, Nike, Intel, uh, a plethora of uh, large national brands now. Uh, even uh, Tesla receives some kind of uh, technology transfer help from SBA and other federal agency programs. Some local examples is Cerner, um, uh, which is, uh, I used to work for Cerner uh, about a year ago and uh, they are in 20 different countries, uh, healthcare IT industry, uh, more than, I think they support about 16,000 jobs <laughs> here in Kansas City, Missouri. So it's, it's, a, it's a huge deal. Uh, the Rosteri receives some form of help from SBA, Hereford House, uh, Chateau Dairy, Cabela's. These are some local examples uh, that started small with the help of SBA. So the next is the federal contracting, right? So in fiscal year 2017, we have not received dollars for fis uh, fiscal year 2018 yet. Uh, the federal government spent more than $400 billion on prime contracts. The Small Business Act of 1953 requires that uh, these, these agencies set aside 
uh, of contract dollars to small businesses. So what that translates is to that's 105 billion that went to small businesses, and um, we have m the federal agencies have met this requirement uh, for the last few years. And out of that 105 billion, 5% is set aside for businesses that are small disadvantaged businesses or 8A certified. 5% uh, is set aside for women-owned small business. 3% uh, for historically underutilized business zones or hub zones. And 3% for service disabled veteran-owned small businesses. So uh, can you imagine uh, a female veteran-owned small business in a hub zone community which, is also, which also happens to be 8A certified. The likelihood of that small business getting federal contract goes much high given the uh, small business can um, provide goods and services uh, based on the needs of that federal agency. In other, so in other words, they can deliver on their promises. Okay. So a little more on the 8A business development program. These are for, uh, to promote business development of small business concerns owned by socially and economically disadvantaged folks, African American, Asian American, uh, uh, Native American, uh, and so forth are some examples. And then hub zone is to help uh, distressed communities reverse the sluggish economy. Uh, if you go to maps.certified.sba.gov and put your address, uh, you can, it can let you know whether or not that uh, particular area is a hub zone certified. Uh, this is certified by the U.S. Census, and, uh, um, and, and it tends to change every once in a while. So. And then we have the Women-Owned Small Business Program. Uh, makes it easier for women-owned small businesses uh, to compete and win federal contracts. Many of our logos are prepared by women-owned small businesses, uh, even the SBA logo down at the very left, uh, bottom left corner. And then uh, service disabled veteran-owned small businesses. Uh, many projects from the VA has to go to uh, uh, service disabled veteran-owned small businesses. And we help you certify for 8A and hub zone. And you can self-certify for um, service disabled veteran-owned small business and also the women-owned business. And uh, a caveat, uh, um, certification doesn't guarantee you'll receive a contract. Many times people get certified and they don't go out uh, doing their due diligence looking for federal contracts. And um, that could be a bummer because you do have to put work, and we have resources in place to help you do that. So we have a full-time business opportunity specialist in our office who helps small businesses get into federal contracts. And we also have uh, uh, PTACs, Procurement Technical Assistance Centers, housed throughout the state of Kansas and Missouri. This is funded by Department of Defense, uh, Defense Logistics Agency, and uh, their primary role is to help uh, small business find local, state, and federal contracts, whereas we only help with federal contracts. To put things in perspective, our business opportunity specialist help uh, around 40 small businesses in these 89 counties receive around $387 million worth of federal contracts last fiscal year. And it, it's huge. And um, many of them come from construction businesses or facility management and so forth. So the last piece that I have here is the disaster recovery. Uh, this is the least known secret for us. Uh, many um, times when there is a, a federally declared natural disaster, we provide low interest federal disaster loans up to $2 million uh, to renters, homeowners, small business owners, and some nonprofits. Uh, so essentially, when something bad happens, FEMA comes in, clears the road, and provides the immediate necessities. Our role is to come after that to uh, revive that economy, put hands, uh, put dollars in the uh, in the hand of these small business owners and the community, so that they can get back on their feet and keep moving. The interest rates can be as low as 2.5 percent. And uh, right now, many um, renters, homeowners, small business owners in Nevada are receiving these uh, disaster loans for the flooding that happened. And what we have found in Kansas and Missouri is uh, many times uh, small businesses affected by drought or tornadoes uh, get this kind of help. Uh, I, I'm, I'm sure there are still some counties that are currently eligible on both sides of the state to receive these loans. And you do not have to be physically hit by a natural disaster to get these loans. As long as there is an economic injury, you might be qualified to get these loans. Uh, for example, if I own a ranch business and I buy uh, feed for my cattle from local farmers, if the local farm farming community is hit by drought, I have to go buy my feed from somewhere else. That is an economic injury to my business. So I can apply for a disaster loan. 
Okay, so uh, the current administration's uh, initiative for rural America. So we have the agency goal to increase rural lending by 5% and also to increase rural small business uh, certifications by another 5%. So uh, we want to ensure uh, rural communities, uh, normally uh, uh, a community that has less than 50,000 uh, folks is considered a rural community. It is uh, determined by the U.S. Census. And uh, we want to increase our lending. We want to make sure they have access to investment opportunities uh, and also uh, benefit from the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act of 2017 and also provide access to federal contracting. Uh, we work very closely with United States Department of Agriculture. Many of their programs are tailored to rural farming business and ours to regular business. And uh, through the combined capabilities of both agencies, we have been able to uh, help small business uh, farming and regular business communities in many of the rural America. And we have been doing rural initiative trainings. Uh, so I've been making rounds. I was in uh, Independence, Kansas yesterday. I've been to Atchison, Kansas, uh, Columbus, Erie, Kansas, and I have scheduled a bunch of trainings to kind of educate communities uh, as such. And uh, I received uh, an email this morning about opportunity zones. Opportunity zones are just like uh, hub zones, but uh, these are designated zones, and I think there is a 60% overlap between hub zones and opportunity zones. So the opportunity zones are, were created to incentivize investment in low-income communities to foster economic revitalization and job creation and to promote sustainable economic growth across the nation. So what this program does is uh, for uh, small businesses that are in the opportunity zones, we have a map. Uh, that shows if uh, uh, an area uh, gets qualified to be in the opportunity zone, and I can share that map with you if you want. Uh, if for a 7A loans under uh, $150,000, there is no annual service fee paid by the lenders, and then there is no upfront guarantee fee paid by small business applicants. So if someone has a small business in this hub zones or opportunity zones, and if they want a 7A loan up to $150,000, the lenders do, do not have to pay a service fee and the small business owners do not have to pay guarantee fee. And then for the 504 loan programs, uh, the, the Opportunity Zone program has expanded the lending opportunity. So um, the SBA has relaxed uh, program requirements for job creation. So whenever a certified development company uh, does a small business loan, uh, the, the amount of loan that they give out to their community is translated into a job requirement. It used to be around 90 to 95,000. Now that requirement has been dropped to 85,000. And then uh, CDCs can also make loans outside of their service area if businesses are located in a rural area. This is a huge deal because uh, originally these uh, certified development companies could, could make loans in the inside their own territory only, but now they can go outside of their service area if the business is located in rural America. And the last one here I have is the Community Advantage Pilot Program. The Community Advantage loan is the $250,000 loan, guarantee loan that I discussed before. So what the Opportunity Zone Program has done is the SBA has expanded the definition of under submarkets for the purpose of Community Advantage Pilot Program to include the opportunity zones, and community advantage lenders are required to make at least 60% of their community advantage loans in under submarket. So in other words, uh, words we are working through our uh, non-profit uh, non uh, community advantage uh, lenders to promote uh, community advantage programs in under submarkets. So this is the opportunity uh, zone program. Uh, I just received this this morning, so I had to kind of print and kind of educate you guys. Uh, I'm planning to put that on my slides as well. Okay, any questions? I hope this was uh, very uh, helpful to you. If you want me or our uh, uh, co-workers to come to your communities and talk to people or individual small businesses, or if you want to gather a bunch of small businesses and train them on how to export to foreign countries, uh, there are so many resources out here. Uh, for instance, we provide grant monies to, the, to both uh, all the states in the U.S., uh, uh, here, Kansas and Missouri, we, we provide grant money to promote international trade. For example, if a small business makes uh, some chips that goes into airline industry, we, uh, through our resource partners, help them go to uh, Paris year or so in France and cover some of that cost to promote their small businesses. Uh, there are grant monies available, and uh, uh, the Department of Commerce does matchmaking uh, through our uh, embassy folks in foreign countries. You know, if you, if you work with them and tell them, I'm a small business owner, 
I have these products and services. I'm thinking about finding a customer in China or South Korea. Uh, they will work with uh, local uh, personnel there at the U.S. Embassy to find who would be a good fit to do business with this small business community. So uh, please reach out to us, and I uh, would be more than happy to have these events in your communities. So uh, many times, uh, the retails uh, many times are uh, restaurants. So we have a bunch of small businesses uh, that are restaurants here in Kansas and Missouri. Uh, I would assume there should be more than 50 of them uh, just in the last few years. How do they take advantage of this So basically, they come to us, uh, uh, and we send them to our certified uh, counselors through our resource partners like uh, Kansas SBDC, Missouri SBDC, or uh, SCORE mentors, and they sit down with these uh, uh, certified counselors from the start phase of their business. They help them write a business plan, uh, pick a location, and then they provide support throughout the life cycle of that business. So th that's the way they, they, they receive help. And our resource partners are well rehearsed on our programs and services, so they know if someone needs an SBA loan or a micro loan, or if, if someone needs to wait another six months until their credit is built to apply for a small business loan or something along those lines. So we, uh, we help them connect with a certified counselor who is uh, uh, well rehearsed on how to help small business communities. Was that, was that good? Yeah. Okay, good. Any other questions? So basically, uh, people have individual uh, circumstances. So sometimes uh, people come to us who have no idea about what our business plan is. And then sometimes people come to us to try to buy a Subway franchise, and they have done all their due diligence. So it, it really depends. But uh, within five to six months, we, I think uh, from an idea phase to kind of starting a business, we can support uh, a small business owner, given they put the time and uh, effort that they have to put to move forward with their, uh, with their idea. So I would say any, anywhere from a couple of months to about six months. Yeah, so that's a, that's a very good question, right? So our loan programs are counter-cyclical, meaning when the, uh, the economy is doing uh, good, the lending institutions can uh, take that risk themselves so they are more, uh, more available to make that loan. But uh, many of our loans are uh, loan programs. We, we have seen higher demand during uh, recessions or uh, things of that nature. To put things in perspective, our default rate is 4%. Uh, out of 100 loans, uh, guarantee loans that we make, eight of them go bad. We are able to work with the remainder four to bring them back on track, and unfortunately, four of them uh, go to default. And I think that's a very good uh, number for us, and also uh, the trend is decreasing, meaning that the default rates are going uh, small uh, compared to historical uh, figures. Counselors, yeah. So True. So sometimes if it is uh, training and counseling or if they are not having enough sales and marketing, uh, if they're having problem with the loan itself, we work with either the counselors or also with our lending partners to see. Sometimes, um, you know, restructuring a business debt or, uh, or moving to a completely different line of business might be the best uh, way to go about helping that small business. So it is all case-by-case uh, -case basis. Sometimes they just need training and counseling, sometimes uh, refinance of the date uh, after business debt. Sometimes what we have seen is uh, a small business owner have an SBA loan and they have another loan from another institution from long time ago that is charging them a lot of interest. And, and the business is insolvent <coughs> because they have to pay that high of an interest. And as simple as restructuring some of that debt helps that uh, small business uh, remain uh, solvent. So. True, everything is free. Uh, you do not have to get an SBA loan to work with our counselors. And as a matter of fact, uh, if you are not a U.S. citizen or uh, own a small business, 51% uh, 
by a U.S. citizen, you cannot get an SBA loan. We have many immigrant communities working with our uh, SPDC network uh, in training and counseling and marketing and things like that. And funding is just a piece of it. There are so many things that goes to starting a small business. So yes, they can work. And then uh, our uh, services are confidential, so we do not share any of the your ideas or financials with anyone. We are required by la law to protect that. And also, uh, I advise uh, communities to go talk with a counselor and not wait until you uh, get into trouble and asking for help. Sometimes uh, we have a small business owner that was doing uh, some kind of business and the stream of income was only one. Uh, and then now working with our resource partners, this individual have four different streams of income that this individual was not aware of before. So. Even if you are doing well, it's always good to kind of go talk with these counselors. Many of them are global business uh, certified professionals. Many of them are tech commercialization certified professionals. Many of them are just professionals on uh, small business loans and so forth. So uh, depending upon what kind of business you are trying to get into, they'll help you connect with the right counselor. And, uh, and uh, they do uh, phenomenal jobs. They create uh, thousands of jobs in Kansas and Missouri. They create hundreds of small businesses. Uh, uh, startups every year, and it's required uh, for them to report that to us because they receive uh, partially funding from us. And uh, there is metrics on, uh, they have to do X many hours of training and counseling, they have to start X many hundred small businesses, they have to infuse uh, uh, X many millions of dollars in the local economy and so forth in order to qualify to continue getting that grant. And many times the small business development centers are housed uh, in an uh, educational institution and they are funded by the SBA, the education institution itself, and also the local state. So they carry a lot of weight. So they have to train yes, yes. Any other questions? Well, thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Thanks again, Ram, for coming and presenting today. Um, I will get his slides, and then we'll get that out to everybody who's been in attendance today. And uh, Ram, if you want to stick around, just in case there's additional questions that people may have, that'd be yeah. great. A uh, few thanks. Thanks again, Community America, for the sponsoring the Main Street Pizza today. So it was very good. Uh, Velocity Lee Summit, thanks so much for partnering with the Chamber of Commerce. Bridge Space, thanks for letting us host here. Um, this is great. Big round for, for Ben. Again, thanks to all of you for coming out and uh, for a lunch and learning a little bit more about the SBA programs. Uh, make sure you get with Rom if you have questions, and have a wonderful rest of your week. Thanks, guys.